Hello everyone and welcome to the Saigon Times. I'm Taeke and today we're going to meet Lin, a very beautiful lady coming a long way to Vietnam. We know each other already, so can you introduce yourself to the viewer of the Saigon Times? Okay, so my real name is Alushka Janssen van Feren. It's a mouthful. <laughs> But uh, my Vietnamese name is Lin because mm. it's so much easier to say. So is it the first time that you come to Vietnam? I have been living in Vietnam for about 10 years wow. now. Mm -hmm. um, I came here when I was 19 years old. I dropped out of university. Mm -hmm. I was heartbroken from a, a previous relationship and I just wanted to exit South Africa. Mm -hmm. And one of my best friends told me, hey, I'm going to Vietnam, I'm going to be in Nha Chang and I'm going to work as a scuba diver. Mm. And I said, wow, that sounds so cool. We can, we can live our island life in Vietnam. So what were the first impressions that you have on uh, living in Vietnam? I remember very, very clearly that when I first arrived to Vietnam, 10 years ago, the first thing I noticed was the amount of motorbikes. There are just so many motorbikes. The way that they drive is chaos. But over the years of living here, I've, I've understood that it's organized chaos. Mm -hmm. So there, there's, there's a flow going on, you just need to learn it. <laughs> so there must be something that made you decide to stay here for 10 years already. Was it? Well, there's a number of things. When I was younger, uh, the reason why I couldn't go back home was because I didn't have enough money. I soon realized that uh, Vietnam is a place of opportunity. There's really so many things that you can do as a young person in your 20s in Vietnam. I had the chance to find myself in a Chang and then I had the ability to think further for myself, by myself by myself, nobody else helping me. Then I moved to Ho Chi Minh City, which is, wow, Ho Chi Minh City is like a business hub. It's like, I don't know, maybe, like, I think in Vietnam people describe it as a dormitory. Mm -hmm. Moving to Ho Chi Minh City has really changed my, my perspective on how I'm gonna create my own business, how I'm gonna create my own uh, independence mm -hmm. in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And Vietnam has treated me so great in, in that sense. The people have been friendly along the way, really generous. I don't feel that sense of, I do something for you and you owe me. It's more of a, okay, I enjoy whoever you are, so I'm gonna do for you. I have a Vietnamese friend here and she explained it to me very, very well. She said, she's Vietnamese and when she, she, she sees a, a foreigner, she feels that well, this is my country and I have a lot more knowledge about this place and I'm able to help you, so I help you whether or not it benefits me or not. I went to Dat Lat, which is a mountain city in Vietnam and there was this grab driver, which is like the motorbikes in Vietnam and I asked him to take me to a very famous um, Nem Nuong restaurant. I went there and it was closed. So now I was stuck with this Grab driver and I didn't know where to go or what to do. So I asked him, hey, I don't know where to go or what to eat, can you help me? So he took me back to the, um, to the walking street mm -hmm. and he showed me exactly where to eat and he didn't even charge me for the Grab. For free? For free, all of it for free. Mm -hmm. And I was I was shocked because I didn't like I didn't expect that and it came from nowhere. Mm -hmm. And those small little bits of kindness that it's it's the something Maybe that I Vietnam yeah. More. That's what I, I mean about Vietnam. You you get that here and that's what made me fall in love with Vietnam so much. Mm. When you move uh, south to Ho Chi Minh City, do you have your own like you set your own target or goals when you move here? Firstly, when I was in Nechang, which is a very small city, I was a teacher and I had this big dream that I want to be on TV, I want to be a star, I want to be famous. And that was my goal. I wanted to be in the limelight in Vietnam. I dreamed to come to Ho Chi Minh City and just work in television. And uh, my main goal was to help 
uh, young kids, you know, be a source of inspiration in in some way in their lives, whether it be in teaching English or whether it be in the way that I just simply live my lifestyle um, or how authentic I am whenever I am in front of people. When was the first time that you really experienced just here in Vietnam? I do remember the very first time that um, that I experienced Tet. I didn't like. I just started to see a lot of signs. I didn't really understand the language back then. I started to see a lot of shops are closing and they're not open, and everything becomes more expensive and um, the streets were more quiet uh, that's what i noticed mm -hmm. um, is there anybody there with you or you alone during that time i was with my foreign friends mm. um, and we kind of just realized okay it's tit holiday everyone's with their family what are we gonna do <laughs> mm. so we kind of you know as foreigners we come together and we have our own little Tet holiday, mm -hmm. where we just spend time together and go through the Tet holiday as as we normally do with our lives. But the first time that I spent Tet holiday with my friends, it was basically like how we spend New Year's, but much longer. When I moved to Ho Chi Minh City, I found that the city is deathly quiet. I think from that moment you know why the Vietnamese come here from Ho Chi Minh City to a dorm, right? Yeah, that's true. Like, so maybe people mm. will come and leave. Mm. Yeah, like it's the same like when you go to school and you live in the dormitory, we're here for business, we're here for study, we're here for, you know, we're here for a reason. But when it's Tet holiday, we go back home. So what do you think, what does that mean to the Vietnamese? I once dated a Vietnamese guy who was very into traditions and um, he was very into telling me the superstitions that Vietnamese people have, uh, especially surrounding Tet holiday. One of the rules that I found really crazy was when I was sweeping the house mm. and I wanted to clean, he told me that I wasn't allowed to sweep the dirt out of the house. Within the first few days of Tet, is it? Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to sweep any dirt out of your house because then you're sweeping the luck out of your house, right? Yes. How do you feel about that? I think it's cute. I think it's cute. I just didn't know what to do with the dirt. <laughs> like, <laughs> where am I supposed to put it? In the trash? Keep all the trash in the house? But yeah, it was, it was very interesting. It was uh, a really cool experience mm. for me to delve so deep into a Vietnamese tradition and culture mm. and yeah I I have a respect for that so 10 year living here so you have witnessed many test holidays right so what changes uh, in test holiday that you can notice up to now if I can think of anything that's changed I think it's just the way that I noticed more and more things about Tate holiday Tate for me I understand that it's a very diverse experience for any Vietnamese person. I don't think Tet is ever gonna really change because it it's truly just a time that you go back home mm. and you go back to your family and you go back to your roots. Mm. And I think that's been consistent throughout the years that I've been here. Mm. Next year is the year of the rapid in the Lunar New Year. But to Vietnam, this is the year of the cat. Mm -hmm. Do you love cat? I'm a big fan of cats. Actually, I have three cats at home mm. and I'm a 100% cat person. Okay, this might sound really weird, but there's a rhyme mm. that I know about cats and it goes like this. Cats have nine lives, you have one. Touch my boyfriend, you'll have none. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's practical as well for the next new year, girls. <laughs> right? So, uh, I want to know more. I think the viewer also want to know more about what you usually do uh, during Tet. Before Tet, it's literally chaos in Vietnam. It's literally chaos. Everyone is working super hard. There's deadlines, deadlines, deadlines. Everyone's trying to make money. 
uh, everyone's trying to pay everyone because it's very bad luck to owe somebody money during Tate. Um, oh, you really delve into the Vietnamese culture. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> um, so before Tate, everything is literally chaos. Um, during Tate, it's really like, <sighs> you know, like you can go back home, mm. relax, see your family. Maybe for some people it's not that relaxing because if you're closer to 30, your mm. parents are going to start asking you, when are you going to get married? When are you going to get children? When, <laughs> you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm at that age now, so I'm starting to feel that even from my parents. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lynn, so much to stand up for our voice. <laughs> this generation, we usually have to deal with that kind of question, right? Right. Yeah. It's it's a little bit of a, a a a reason why I think a lot of 30 year olds or around that age don't really look forward to mm. going back home. But once you get over that hill, you you get to the fun part, yeah. and that is the lisi. <laughs> That's it. Talk right. about Lise. You know, um, some experts will not know what's Lise. Can you explain what's Lise to the foreigners? Lise is a little envelope um, that every young person in the family is very excited to open, and every older person is not so excited to give <laughs> because uh, it's an envelope full of not full of money, but it's an envelope with money and the uh, Lisi, I think if you translate it, means lucky money. Lucky money. And um, what I've I've learned about Lisi is that in Tet Holiday, the elders give Lisi to the uh, younger people in the family mm. um, to receive luck. Yes. To receive luck. And the youngers receive the luck from the elders mm. and um, hopefully use the money wisely. Chuk mung nam mời. So, Lin, I want to ask you a question about your startup business here. So, you turn from a teacher to a businesswoman. Mm -hmm. yes. So, it's kind of a, a new journey and it's kind of um, adventurous, right? <laughs> yes, it's been a big stressful adventure. <laughs> mm, can you share with the viewer your journey? At the beginning of this year, I decided to quit my job as a teacher mm. and um, I wanted to pursue uh, um, opening my own company in import and export. Mm. Um, and the reason why I want to do that is because I I'm tired to feel like I'm living from one salary to the next mm. and I'm ready to create something for myself and create something that I can keep for myself in the long run. Mm. Um, something that I can call my own and really feel that sense of independence mm. and be able to say like, I made it. <laughs> so you have to face with many challenges, right? difficulties that you have to struggle every day yeah going into this I did know that there were gonna be difficulties but I did not think that they were gonna be so overwhelming mm -hmm. um, I think that the most difficult thing about starting your own business is definitely up here you know like you have to have a strong mindset um, you have to be willing to take risks and it's a lot of adjusting because going from being a person that's uh, given a job, paid a salary, um, working Monday to Friday, uh, sometimes on the weekend, mm -hmm. um, it's it's hard to 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 change that mindset to becoming the person that creates opportunities for yourself, goes out, creates work not just for yourself but for your staff mm. um, taking risks oh my god I, as i mentioned before i'm a person that enjoys safety and consistency so taking risks is a really hard part for me about being a businesswoman uh, yeah yeah it's scary it's nerve-wracking 
Um, I, I don't suggest doing it by yourself. And if you do it by yourself, you really need to focus on taking care of yourself, uh, maintaining a good routine, uh, going to gym, taking care of your mental health is really, really, really important. One of the things that, actually two of the things that I realized during this whole experience is number one, my skills that I thought that I could only use as a teacher has actually been so helpful in many aspects of my life. So I, I learned that skills that you would normally use in one job, you need to understand that those skills are helpful and useful in any job. The second thing that I learned is that I found an I have a newfound respect for my dad. Mm -hmm. um, my dad was a businessman mm -hmm. and um, he always came home and he was so stressed and he would usually be angry and he would usually be so busy. Um, and I just could never understand him well. But now that I'm opening up my own business and I'm creating my own thing, mm -hmm. I can totally understand what was going through his head, what was his daily struggles. I have a newfound uh, respect for any businessman or any businesswoman um, because it's much harder than it looks. It's mm. much, much, much harder than it looks. Mm. So we want to know more about your business. What's your main product? Okay, so um, my company is a distribution company mm. and um, within import and export, it's quite seasonal. So depending on which season it is, that would be your main product. Mm. Um, at the moment, I have uh, my main products that I am preparing for next year is fruit and seafood. Mm -hmm. The main products of fruit mm. uh, is durian, um, yummy, <laughs> um, passion fruit mm. and mango. Mango. And... Um, the seafood that I mostly export is shrimp. And that's what I, I, I'm doing at the moment, but I, I'm also doing a lot of other things because, uh, you know, different countries need different things at different times. Mm -hmm. And you have to be really flexible within this business. Mm -hmm. And with the seasons changing, you have to be like ahead of the season. Like, what are people gonna need next? Mm -hmm. What What is the... What is the need and how can I provide it? Mm. So if people want to contact you, how can you uh, instruct them? So if you would like to support my startup business or if you're looking for something uh, locally from Vietnam or even if you are in a different country and you're looking for something, um, whether it be clothing, whether it be food, whether it be uh, tech, whether it be whatever you're looking for, um, uh, I can help you. Just call me on this number or contact me through Facebook. That's probably the easiest. Do you have any wishes for the Vietnamese during Ted's holiday? Wow, am I gonna get Lisi for this? <laughs> <laughs> to get it, what would you say? <laughs> okay, so um, I would like to wish all of the Vietnamese people from Vietnam, also the foreigners, if you're celebrating it, if you're married to a Vietnamese, if you are a Viet Kiu, doesn't matter if you are in Vietnam, um, I would like to wish you a very happy new year filled with success, filled with joy, filled with things that you really desire to achieve in your life, filled with motivation, uh, with the ability to really, you know, hone your mindset, hone your skills, um, become the person who you want to be this year. I know it's been really hard, like last year and the year before and the year before. So this year is the year for you. I trust in you. I believe in you. I would like to also wish uh, my family back in South Africa. Uh, a very happy new year uh, and a Merry Christmas because I couldn't be there. Um, I really uh, miss you a lot and I hope to see you soon. And then lastly, I would like to wish every Vietnamese person in Vietnamese, so bear with me, please. Aluska muốn chúc mọi người Việt Nam 
à, một năm vui vẻ à, một năm có tiếng nhiều một năm xinh đẹp một năm may mắn và một năm có yêu thương nhiều lắm wow really good <cười> so as second time so we want to wish the viewers here a wonderful year as you are you too link thank you, you are so wonderful. much <cười> thank you for taking your precious time to come to this episode today with me and the viewer thank you for inviting me i'm really honored to be here